Yeah, this is all original graveyard. Lloyd Leraw knows many of the stories that ended in this cemetery on the Calasas First Nation. These were all headstones, like all the way up. It sat next to the Marivelle Residential School, where Lara attended as a child and later worked as an administrator when Ottawa and the band took it over. Yeah, well, the trees are in the way, but if you take a look at this white building here, mm -hmm. then if you go, if you went straight across, that would have been where, like, the residence was. This all was once part of a Catholic mission, founded in the late 1880s by the Oblates Order. Ground penetrating radar work on this site recently identified 751 unmarked graves. This is a Roman Catholic grave site. It's not a residential school grave site. Calasas Chief Cadmus Delorme says it remains unclear how many residential school children lie buried here. From the oral stories that I was told so far, from what I know, 75% um, are, um, you know, Maryville Residential School um, um, children, like, like, like what that one at Maryville, but um, I, I can't confirm that. 75% would mean more than 500 children are buried here. The announcement from Cowasis came on the heels of a smaller but similar find on the grounds of a residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia. They shook a nation still coming to grips with the darkest part of its history and the thousands of indigenous children who never came home. But on Kawasa's First Nation, there is an ease about blurring unknown residential school deaths with the cemetery. The older ones knew that it, it wasn't all children in there. Some say the story here is different. All they had to do was ask the older generation first before they went public to really find out what happened, you know. And uh, there wouldn't have been that big of a, I don't know what the word would be, hullabaloo, I guess. Linda Whiteman and her sister, Pearl Lara, attended Maryville from the late 1940s to the 1950s. They say this is not like what was found on the grounds of Kamloops Residential School, where ground-penetrating radar discovered evidence of 200 buried children in an old apple orchard. Here in Calasis, this is a known cemetery. There was a mixture of everyone in that graveyard, in that cemetery. Our great-grandparents are buried there, our grandparents are buried there, and our parents are buried there. Families outside the First Nation also buried people here. It was the surrounding farmers and the beaches, and on the north side of the river there was a Métis community, and they had people buried as well in our cemetery. Most of the flags marking possible human remains are in the oldest section of the cemetery, where a priest in the early 1960s removed all the headstones, creating uncertainty as to who is buried here and where. Lloyd Leraw saw it happen. He said they used a one-ton truck to push and carry the headstones away. We were in school, and then we came out, and there was all kind of activity going on there. But why the headstones disappeared remains part of the mystery. Some say they were removed by a priest in a dispute with the band. Others said it was because the markers were crumbling and the grave site sinking in. So the priest at that time basically informed all the parishioners and people that had loved ones in there that they better come and clean it up. But uh, not enough parishioners came out apparently so he decided just to, if you're not going to look after it, then this is how it's going to be done. The work to identify the graves without headstones began a few years ago. LaRosse said there are four mission registry volumes. CBC News obtained the index and several pages from the registry's first volume, covering baptisms, marriages, and burials from 1885 to 1933. There are about 450 burials recorded during this period. CBC News managed to determine the ages in 184 of the burials up to the year 1908. 94 of them were either preschool aged or died at birth. The rest range in age from the very young to the very old. 
the records show that at least two school-aged children were buried here after the residential school opened in 1898. But this is only a partial record. The Catholic Church holds all the documents that would reveal how many children buried in this cemetery died at the residential school. There's a lot of flags out there <clears throat> and a lot of them are outside the original boundary of the graveyard. It's these markers that weigh on Lloyd Lara. What's the shocking part is what's out there, what we don't know, what we didn't know growing up, what we played over, you know, and treated as a, as a schoolyard, but not knowing there were bodies there. Lara believes many of the answers lie with the Catholic Church, so we approach them. The Archdiocese here in Regina would not say whether any of the records obtained by CBC News matched or added to documents in its possession. In a statement, the Archdiocese said that it had no information on why the headstones were removed and any records that would help shed light on who is buried in these hundreds of unmarked graves would only be shared with the First Nation. We don't know until we see all the records that the oblates are going to are going to supply you know <clears throat> i also heard you know when they made that statement that there are also some records that they will never declassify you know and are those the ones that they killed those are the ones that died in their care we don't know you know what are they going to give us what are they going to keep when they should be giving everything the work has only begun unearthing this part of history. Jorge Barrera, CBC News, Calasis, First Nation.